Hi everyone, this is Real World Audio and today we are doing an autopsy on a high-end speaker cable and I'm going to touch in a few words what makes a cable special and what's the difference between a junk cable and a very expensive speaker cable and uh, this is a harmonic technology the speaker cable uh, this is not a current model, it's about 15-18 uh, years old and uh, I'm taking it apart because I'm trying to do an upgrade to it. And uh, this video is about taking it apart and sharing with you why this cable is so expensive and uh, what those things that they do here make a difference. So first of all, when you look at the logo and uh, the inscription it has a direction on it and that shows the directionality of the cable and that's uh, because uh, the copper wire in it they are aligned so so copper has a directionality so when they draw the wire then uh, the the leading end and the lagging end they are different so if you flip the orientation of a wire then it will have different sonic properties so when you have uh, two cables and you see that arrow there that's a guarantee that the cables drawing direction is identical in those two cables and eventually when you plug it to your system you can plug it one way or you can plug it the other way so you the direction can point towards your load or can point towards the source but you do that together with both left and right cables and don't flip them over and that will add a layer of extra clarity to the sound and and this is where the directionality comes from it marks the directionality of the drawing of the copper inside and also it marks the direction of the twist because these two cables on the inside they are twisted so here this is already another half of the cable I have cut it in half and this is the other end and as you can see that is at the center, that's the conductor material. But before we get there, let's see what's happening here. So outside we have here a nice outer skirt. So this is a woven hard plastic material. Uh, this kind of stuff is uh, the same thing that's on, I would say like 70% of the speaker cables and power cords and whatnots on the planet. It's the same stuff, it comes in different uh, diameters, but also if you puff it up, it can, it can puff up to a much bigger size and in, it can uh, unpuff itself. So it really adapts to the diameter of the contents on the inside. And then underneath this uh, protective uh, skirt, which is there to give mechanical protection. So for example, if you have a cat or a dog, or you have anything that would uh, uh, catch against the cable, then this thing has a little pliability, it moves around, so you will not scuff the, the material underneath, but it gives a little extra freedom to protect. Inside there is a, a plastic uh, piece, I don't know if you can see it, this trans transparent plastic material and that's a layer of dampening. So it, it serves to dampen all those resonances that affect the cable. And, and that's a very critical point because if you do not dampen the resonances, they are going to enter into the signal and uh, they're going to act as low level smear in the sound. So underneath, underneath that, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, that outer plastic layer, there is a layer of uh, Kevlar. So this is woven Kevlar, a Kevlar uh, uh, around the, the cable's length. And this, it's really neatly woven and it took me about almost an hour 
to get rid of it from from that small length and and the purpose of kevlar is also to dampen resonances it is really an excellent uh, dampening material of course you know it from a bulletproof vest uh, woven kevlar has the capacity to even slow down a speeding bullet it also has the capacity to dampen uh, vibrations mechanical vibrations and when you are playing music of course the air resonates and kevlar is a really nice uh, thing to get rid of those resonances and underneath that kevlar there is another layer of layer of plastic and once you remove this uh, plastic layer there is a soft layer woven around the cable and once you remove all of these layers and the function of all of these is to provide dampening to decouple the wires the conductors from resonances mechanical resonances in the air and and you would say but those resonances are too small to get picked up no they are not because the cable is very long it's uh, several feet long several meters long and it acts like an antenna so if if it was only this long then it would not pick up uh, most of these acoustic vibrations but because it's several meters long it will pick them up to a significant level so now we come to the internals and we see that basically we have two uh, conductors and each of those conductors is consisting of several individually uh, insulated uh, conductors total gauge 11 each of them and they have an extra uh, extra insulation on top of that that uh, that looks like some uh, tubing like like fish tank tubing like urethane tube or something like that but as you see they are woven together and they are woven together to uh, make them more resistant to EMI RFI because of the the twisting and uh, however you see that there is this uh, this fabric or i would say plastic plastic uh, strings woven into that and the purpose of that is to space out the wires to decrease the capacitance between the conductors so this is what makes a cable sound much better than just taking uh, two wires and running them letting them hang in the air and running them whatever uh, because in that case you do not have any extra dampening you do not have uh, controlled uh, RFI uh, resistance and you do not have uh, lessened capacitance so all of these may add up and then truly make for a really huge difference in sound so why am I butchering it all up? And my reason for that is because uh, all of this plastic also adds uh, a smear to the sound, uh, like a, a plasticky uh, aftertaste. And uh, I'm getting rid of it. This is just an experiment. I do not know what I will find. But in my previous experiences, uh, this is a really good configuration when you have a twisted pair for speaker cable. However, the very best I have found so far for speaker cable is to have your conductors run at 4 inches or 10 centimeter distance from each other in parallel, distance them out. Because when they are about this distance apart from each other, then there is no capacitive coupling at all between them. And, uh, and that, in my experience, have made for the biggest experience I have so far achieved with conductors and uh, the other thing that counts in the sound to a great degree is the total gauge of the conductor here we have total gauge 11 which is a nice big heavy current carrying capacity plus we have six and copper really high purity copper and uh, what i will do is like space them out i will see if i go for the four inches 10 centimeters or maybe I will keep it a little bit closer, but I will use wood spacers, so add pieces of wood 
and uh, fasten the wire to wooden pieces and the wood will act as uh, the resonance dampener to remove those pesky vibrations that, that we could pick up from the air. So it will be an experiment and I will let you know if it works or not. If it doesn't work, then it's a very expensive experiment. But now you will be enriched at no cost because you will know whether it works or not. So whether you should just use your uh, nice cable or you should be, you should feel entitled to just carry on, do an autopsy on it and just uh, reconfigure it. So thank you for tuning in. I hope this experience will be positive for everyone, me included. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends. Bye bye.